thieves target $3 million in an armored car in Las Vegas. They steal the vehicle, then disguise themselves as they make their getaway by jet. Many called it the perfect crime. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Crime Chronicles. On today's episode, we are going to cover the case of Heather Tallchief, a.k.a. the most wanted woman in America. It was 1993, the year of the World Trade Center bombing and the Rodney King trial. Heather Tallchief and her boyfriend, Roberto Salas, made the move from San Francisco to Las Vegas to start winning in life. The two had met in San Francisco where Heather was a recovering crack addict and had turned her life around. Heather was working as a nurse at an AIDS hospice. Roberto was 27 years Heather senior. He was an ex-con who had just gotten out from serving 17 years in prison for armed robbery and the killing of a security guard. They had only been dating for a few months before they decided to move to Las Vegas. In Vegas, Roberto instructed Heather to apply for work as a driver of armored vehicles supplying cash to the casinos in Vegas. Heather had no prior experience. Medicine and caregiving have been Heather's passion up until now. Heather passed the criminal record check with a clean bill of health. Heather got the job at Loomis Armor Inc. as a driver. At first, like most of the drivers at Loomis, Heather was assigned to the casino house runs. This work involves transporting new banknotes to thousands of gambling tables each day, but the stakes to the company and the employees are low. The new notes are easily traceable. In September, after proving her diligence and reliability on the house runs, Heather was promoted to one of the riskier bits of work the business did, the cash machine runs. Five days a week, accompanied by two colleagues, she would drive millions of dollars in unmarked bills to the strip. October 1st, 1993. The first was a Friday. The strip was gearing up for the weekend rush of out-of-town gamblers, the addicts, bankers, and bachelor parties. This particular Friday would go down in the history of Las Vegas' greatest heist. The Loomis vehicle occupied by three people, two Loomis guards was responsible for currying cash to the casino's ATMs. Heather was behind the wheel. The truck was filled with neat piles of crisp, unmarked bills amounting to around $3 million. All three knew it was gonna be a long day. Heather knew that October 1st was going to be one of the biggest changeover days of the year, a point in time when the resort moved from hosting one convention to another. It was around 8 a.m. when the Loomis vehicle driven by Heather pulled up to the Circus Circus Casino Hotel. It was the first stop of the day. Moving money around the strip was hard and heavy work. The two Loomis guards hauled the first of the money containers out of the truck. Following protocol, they closed the vehicle doors, made sure it was locked, then slapped the truck flank to let Heather know they was going in the casino and for her to head to the pickup point on the other side of the casino. The two Loomis guards follow a simple route throughout the casino going from one ATM to another till they got to the last one by the exit where Heather was supposed to meet them with the vehicle. That took about 20 minutes, but when they got to the exit on schedule, the armored vehicle was nowhere in sight, nor was there any sign of Heather. They waited and waited some more, and then they began to get worried. Maybe she got lost or was stuck in traffic. They waited a few minutes more. They didn't want to get Heather in trouble by prematurely reporting her absent. The two Loomis guards finally placed a panic call to the Loomis office. A new armored vehicle picked them up and they began to conduct a sweep of the street looking for Heather or the vehicle. Back then, there was no GPS tracking. All they had was a radio. They tried desperately to make radio contact with Heather, but she and her vehicle and about $3 million in cash had disappeared. Police was called and an investigation took place with the FBI assisting them in the case. Heather residence was searched and they found a letter dated September 28th that she had wrote to her mom and left in plain sight to be found. They also found a fingerprint that matched a record in their database. The print belonged to a man who they believed was named Gabriel Suave. They put out a warrant for him and for Heather. 
but the FBI will soon find out that Gabriel Suave was an alias that was adopted by the 48-year-old armored car robber, convicted murderer, and acclaimed prison poet Roberto Salas. A $25,000 reward was offered for information leading to the capture of all those involved in the armored truck theft. FBI Special Agent Walt Stowe was assigned to the case. He interviewed witnesses from families to friends to co-workers to neighbors. Stowe got hundreds of leads and he followed all leads. His most promising lead was an owner of a local business had said he had talked to Heather and Roberto a week before they had told him they were moving to Mexico. That lead didn't pan out. Another lead reported several hours after Heather had vanished in Las Vegas. Two workers at an airport in Denver saw a man dressed as a doctor pushing a wheelchair towards a waiting limousine. The woman in the wheelchair, her face mostly covered, at first seemed elderly, but when she got up and climbed into the limo, she did so with speed that struck the two workers as strange. The FBI did find the abandoned wheelchair in a Denver motel room, but Heather and Roberto were long gone. Two weeks after the heist, the owner of a rental garage called authorities because he had found the armored vehicle that was used in the heist. The owner stated that he grew concerned when he hadn't seen his tenants for a while. He entered the premises and found the Loomis vehicle. Authorities searched the garage and found $3,000 in $1 bills, numerous packing materials, phone numbers to businesses in Miami and the Grand Bahamas, mail rates and information on yacht charters. Weeks passed and the FBI began to sense that this case would take time, a lot of time. They were correct. Four years later, Heather Tallchief rose to number three on the FBI list of his 10 most sought after fugitives. The highest position occupied by a female felon in 23 years. Heather got the title, the most wanted woman in America. She remained elusive as ever. The case was featured on the TV show, America Most Wanted and Unsolved Mystery to try to draw leads. All the leads authority got led to dead ends. Had Heather and Roberto pull off the perfect heist? For over a decade, people thought that. But the story doesn't end there. September 12, 2005, almost exactly 12 years after Heather had disappeared, a woman in her early 30s, her eyes a little less lively, boarded a plane from Amsterdam to Los Angeles. Heather was traveling using a British passport she had obtained under the name Donna Marie Eaton. She was about to stun the United States Marshal Service in Nevada by surrendering herself into custody. Heather's surrender was just like the heist. It was well planned. She hired attorney Robert Axelrod, who had worked on cases of fugitive surrender before. He set up a press conference to control the narrative. It was held before she was taken into custody. She came here to admit her responsibility, to accept her responsibility, and to face the music. Axelrod said she's admitting her role in the crime and pledging she will pay back Loomis in full. Heather was a mother now. Her son was 10 years old. She said she was tired of hiding and making him hide. She didn't want to live her whole life on the run. The boy father was Roberto Salas. She became pregnant shortly after they escounded with the money. Salas hadn't treated her well, especially after the baby was born. He had moved other women into the home they shared. Heather knew it was best for her and her son if she ran and didn't look back. And that's exactly what she did. For a while, while on the run, Heather looked after her son by earning money as a prostitute. More recently, she'd been working as a chambermaid at a hotel in the Netherlands. She begun a relationship with a man who she was happy with and her son considered him to be his father. Heather stated being a fugitive is a lonely life. After 12 years of lying to those she loved and having no contact at all with her family, it was time to stop running. After her press conference and FBI interviews, Heather pled guilty to one count of bank embezzlement, one count of credit union embezzlement, and one count of possession of a fraudulent obtained passport. On March 30th, 2006, Heather Tallchief was sentenced to 63 months in federal prison, which was the maximum sentence under the limited charges prosecutor had decided to bring. 
she was also ordered to repay $2,994,083.83 in restitutions to Loomis or its insurer over the remainder of her life. Heather was released from prison in the summer of 2010 and was reunited with her son. As of today, Heather lives a low profile life. She has not granted any interviews since being released out of prison. Roberto Salas and the missing millions have not been found. He still remains on the FBI most wanted list. Thank y'all for watching. Please click the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. Leave a comment, click the thumbs up button and share it.